Hi, this is Bob with Sayusla and Mapleton High School Aspire programs, and welcome to part two of our presentation for seniors on what you need to be doing to prepare for life after high school, particularly uh, if it's college or trade school. And in the first part, we covered um, some things that you can do in the summer before your senior year, and then we covered the fall of the senior year. In this second part of the presentation, we're going to cover the winter and spring, and then a few things that you can do in the summer after your senior year. So let's go ahead and start with the winter, and we're going to be looking at um, winter, for our purposes, starts really with January. So, first of all, keep up your grades. And I know that's something that we say every time in every one of these presentations, it really is important. And it's important for a couple of reasons at this point in time, one of which is that you still have a chance to bring up your GPA for both the first semester and the second semesters of high school. And that can be important for admission to some colleges and universities, for eligibility for Oregon Promise, and also for scholarships. So you've got exams coming up for the first semester. Study for those, do as best as well as you can, and then keep those grades up in the second semester. Next is are some deadlines. For University of Oregon, the application deadline, if you did not apply early action, is January 15th. And for, the, for Oregon State University, it is February 1st. So, um, and those are firm deadlines, so be sure that you get your materials in, and if possible, get them in early. Uh, one of the reasons for that is that you will be able to apply for scholarships as soon as you've been admitted, but um, <clears throat> you can't do that until you've been admitted, and um, some of those scholarships may go away if you wait too long to apply to the university. So our recommendation is get your applications in early and then as soon as you're eligible get busy with the OSU Scholar Dollars application uh, form online and also some U of O scholarships that you'll need to apply for. Uh, Oregon Institute of Technology and uh, Portland State University and the community colleges all need to be applied to as do Western Southern and Eastern Oregon universities, and um, we recommend again that you get those applications done early. Uh, some of these are on rolling admissions, which means they simply look at your application and decide as soon as they receive it. The community colleges, of course, if you have a GED or a high school diploma, <clears throat> you are automatically going to be admitted, but and you don't have to hurry to get those applications done. You have many months. But if you don't do those reasonably soon, you might miss out on the opportunity to apply to their foundations, to the community college foundations, for scholarships. And the same could affect um, your um, applications at OIT, PSU, Western, Southern, and Eastern Oregon universities because they also have foundations which you may want to apply to for um, <clears throat> scholarships. Okay, private colleges, um, many of those have deadlines that are early, earlier than some of the public ones. So it may be that some private colleges have deadlines uh, in January, in fact, possibly even January 1st. So be sure to check into those, and that's uh, whether or not they are in state or out of state. Letters of recommendation, we've mentioned this before. Um, <clears throat> ask early for your letters of recommendation from teachers and others. And that might be a family friend, a neighbor, uh, an employer, a pastor, um, any one of these, uh, be sure that you give them plenty of time. And you will need letters of recommendation for the Sayusla Regional Scholarship application, which is due in mid-March but you may also need them sooner for other um, <clears throat> scholarship organizations to which you're applying. So again, ask early. 
And speaking of the Siesla Regional Scholarship application, you should be working on those essays. Uh, again, it's due in mid-March, but get the essays done early. There's four of them. They're only 500 words or less each, and um, <clears throat> you want to make sure that you have time for them to be uh, for them to be edited by someone in Aspire or an English teacher. And again, don't wait till the last minute. Click on this link. SRSA, and you will see the application form, which you can fill out and, and print from our website. There's also um, a video that you may want to watch on uh, completing the regional application form. Applying to community colleges, again, I just want to mention that you need to get those applications done soon enough so that you can have your uh, admission information and your student ID number in time to apply for scholarships and you can check for scholarship deadlines on our Sayusla After HS website. All right, let's take a look at some other things that you need to do in your senior year in the winter, one of which is to apply for scholarships that you will see on our website Sayusla After HS. On the front page, on the home page, there is a list of deadlines. And <clears throat> you should be taking a look at those deadlines. You can click on it here and see what you need to get done um, and when you need to do it. And a number of them do start coming up in the winter, in the winter months. OSEC. Um, <clears throat> The main reason for their OSAC has a lot of scholarships. Many of them don't apply to our students, but one that you should be applying to if you are a top level student, um, good grades, 3.0 and above, and you have some community service and leadership um, uh, things, things that you've done, um, do apply to OSAC. It's online. You can click on this for um, videos that will tell you more about it. If you apply by the early bird deadline of February 15th, you will be entered into a drawing for an additional scholarship. Otherwise, the deadline is March 1st. Now, <clears throat> looking at the spring term, starting with March 1st, again, don't let your grades slide. Keep them up as well as you can. Get the best grades that you can. It could still make a difference. Many scholarship applications are due on March 1st. Take a look at that at our list of deadlines on Sayusla After HS website, and you'll see that there are a whole bunch of them. Uh, these are typically not local ones. These are regional and uh, state scholarships, <clears throat> but they can still be important. And um, there's quite a few of them that come up in March and April. The regional application is due in mid-March. That's a very, very important application. That's probably the most, other than college, that's probably the most important application that you will be doing uh, during your senior year. And because of the dollar amount of scholarships that are available through uh, the regional scholarship application, there's 40 to 50 organizations that participate and there's $240,000 or more that's going to be divided up among the students who apply. And it is just for Sayusla uh, and Mapleton students as well as homeschool students. So um, spend some time on that application. Plan ahead. Please don't wait till the very last minute because we may not have time to help you if it's the last week and we have a flood of students asking us to, to help them with their application. Once again, check the due dates, March, April, and May. You can do that on our website. And the Rotary Four-Way Speech Contest is um, something that you may want to um, participate in in the spring. You can win some scholarship money by doing this. This is a five to seven minute speech that you will give. And the topic is um, <clears throat> the, the Rotary Four-Way test, which is of the things we say and do, and it is um, 
So you write your speech around that topic, and we can tell you more about it in Aspire. The Rotary World Affairs Seminar takes place in the Midwest, typically, and it is a week-long program that focuses on a topic of world interest. You will meet students from all over the world at this seminar, and um, one of the great things about it is that the local Florence Rotary Club will pay the expenses for two students um, who participate. It's a great opportunity. The Aspire Life After High School Handbook is something that we've put together for um, helping our students with all doing all kinds of things after high school, like if you go to college, um, <clears throat> what to take, how to register for classes, how to talk to a professor, uh, how to keep up with your studies, um, signing up for uh, dorm living or off-campus living, how to rent an apartment, how to buy and sell a car, uh, and a number of other things. How to stay safe on campus is one of the most important aspects of this. And <clears throat> it is available at this link, which is on um, one of our websites. Uh, it's about 50 pages, but you can um, look at it as a reference manual instead of just trying to read it through um, page by page. Also, take the Aspire end-of-year survey, and that you'll find out more about as the year goes on. But we do ask that all of our students take this survey so that we know how we're doing and what we could be doing better in uh, Aspire. Some more things for the spring of your senior year. Register at your college and pay the deposit. That's um, <clears throat> once you've been admitted, then you have to confirm that you're going to go there and pay the deposit, and then you'll have opportunities to do things like sign up for housing and meal plans and so on. And some of these um, colleges and universities do ask you to take a placement test so that they know where to put you in um, your starting classes. I know all the community colleges do this, and some of the four-year colleges and universities do also. Uh, if you are going to a community college, you can sign up uh, very possibly to take the, the placement test at the Florence branch of Lane Community College. Uh, and if you do not have to take one of these tests, it will be because you scored high enough on the Smarter Balanced tests, and we can help you uh, determine whether you are eligible for a waiver of one or more of these tests. There's a math test and there's a, an English or language arts test. Sign up for housing and a meal plan at your college or university. And it's important to do this as soon as the opportunity is available, particularly for housing, because if you're going to live on campus, you want to get into the best dorm that you can. And in terms of meal plans, we'll talk with you about that, but there are different levels of meal plan so that you might sign up for just two meals a day or three meals a day or perhaps only one meal a day. And um, that can save you some money. And especially if you're going to be living off campus, you may want to sign up for, let's say, just one meal a day. And then the, the other meals you're going to fix at your own place. And speaking of that, uh, be sure to explore housing opportunities near campus, arrange for roommates, and um, get a jump on uh, getting the best place that you can for the best price. Continue to work and save money. And we hope that uh, by the time you do get to college, you will have a bank account that will help you to cover some expenses that uh, you may need to cover other than through scholarships or um, uh, grants like from FAFSA. Be sure, please, to write thank you notes to the scholarship organizations that uh, give you scholarships. This is very important. Uh, it helps you and them to feel better about the scholarship that you've been given. And it also helps us because those scholarship organizations next year will be even more anxious uh, to give money um, to our students if they've heard from those of you who did receive money. All right. Now, finally, let's take a look at the summer after your senior year. Register for classes at your earliest opportunity. Usually during the school year is a bit too early to register for the actual classes you want to take, 
But as soon as that opportunity comes along, where did that go? There it is. As soon as that opportunity comes along, be sure um, to register uh, as early as possible so that you get the classes that you want before they fill up. All right. Also, secure housing if you're going to be living off campus. And that means um, perhaps signing a lease, putting a down payment on uh, the apartment that you're going to be renting. And of course, what you want to do here is make sure that you get the housing that you want before it all gets taken um, by other students who will be coming in as freshmen. Keep working and saving money. Plan ahead to pay college and housing costs when due. Now, not only for the year coming up, uh, but also for future years, because you really want to, you're going to get a lot of, hopefully, scholarship money to help you cover the first year. But after that, those local scholarships are not going to be nearly as available, a few will be, and uh, you will need to be planning ahead. So make sure that you've worked out a budget, really, hopefully, for the four years that you're going to be in college, or two if it's a community college. Uh, determine what you'll need to take in, uh, to college. So take a look at our handbook that I mentioned and give some thought to um, how you're going to pack the car and what you're going to be taking with you and then leave about half of that at home because you probably won't need it. Get a checking account in your college town or make sure that the bank that you do uh, have a checking account with has a branch in your college town because it's important that you have access to your checking account uh, wherever that may be. Apply for jobs on campus or off campus, and in either case, make sure that you do this at a reasonable time. Don't wait until you get there in August and then start looking for work. Try to line up something ahead of time, either on or off campus. And finally, give your current employer at least two weeks notice before leaving this is not only the most courteous thing to do, but it will also help um, you to get a reference or recommendation from that employer in the future. So that's it for now. Uh, thanks very much for joining us, and we'll be back with some other videos in the near future.